of our show where we field your comments and questions. But watch out, we might just return fire! This is Incoming Episode 2, a special bonus episode of the D6 Generation. In these incoming episodes, we get involved more with our listeners by answering email and playing interviews that we may have gotten with some of our fans while on the road. In this episode, we've got some interviews with players from the Privateer Press War Machine and Hordes New England Team Tournament held at Danger Planet Games in July. After the brief interviews, we'll get back to our email answering as usual. So without further ado, here's the interviews. And bear in mind, the D6G field recording equipment is somewhat, um, well, less than optimal. So (laughs) we'll apologize in advance for the sound quality. Thanks for listening. Hi, so I'm here with uh, Tavis? Tavis. Tavis. Sorry, Tavis. That's all right. Everybody does it. <laughs> so, Tavis, where are you from? Worcester, Mass. Worcester, Mass. Now, Tavis and I just played a quick game. Very quick. How quick was that, Tavis? Did you time uh, it? About 26 minutes. 26 minutes, and that includes deployment, which is probably most of that time, right? Um, yes. Yeah, I died in turn two due to... How'd you kill me now? Um, incubi Incursion. Incubi Incursion, which I'd never or, seen before. Or the Incubi Rush, depending yes. on how yes, you want very to nicely it. done. So, is, uh, who, who, who advanced deployed on me and got me there? Uh, Striders advanced deployed, uh, ran their 14 inches, got right in front of the gun mages, and then, yeah. not knowing that the Incubi were there, you sent in... Uh, Striker. Striker, who earthquaked them yeah. nicely, thank you, because <laughs> now they're... And he's just smiling and saying, oh, it's going, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they're dying, oh, oh, no. oh look, here comes the death. Right, so, right. And then, uh, two really good hits on Striker. And it was over. 21 points of damage. Yeah, it was over. It wasn't yeah, pretty. The box cars were not nice for you. So you clearly know what you're doing. So how long have you been playing the game? Um, Hordes, I think it's coming up on two years. Nice. I, I picked up the models um, when they first came out because I liked the, the, the sculpts for, yep. for the Legion. Um, and I'm a big fan of dragons. Cool. And then I started playing about a month or two after I, I got them painted. Yep. And uh, trial and error with the, the store owner back in yep. Westboro. So. So who do you, how big's your normal gaming group? Um, we've got a fairly good gaming group that meets on Thursday nights. We have um, your average Thursday night between 8 and 14 people. Then where do you meet? Is there a store down there? Yeah, there's uh, in Westboro, Mass. We um, usually meet at the Wiz. Cool. And um, there are a couple guys who actually game in Worcester at a store called uh, Rising Phoenix. Oh, nice. So they have a good crew of War Machine and Hordes players down there. Uh, Rising Phoenix is just starting to get yep. their War Machine crew going on. So. Great. Awesome. So I've seen you some other tournaments. I think I saw you at TempleCon, too. Yeah. Uh, Did you do the some, circuit pretty heavily? Or? Um, as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, Temple, I wanted to go to Gen Con. Money-wise, not going to happen. Um, out of work teacher. Yay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I, I play as much as I can. I've taken a uh, top Legion player a couple times. Nice. So... I'm glad to hear I was defeated easily by a top Legion player and not just, I just started last week, and uh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, you, you were defeated by an army that I know intimately. I mean, Rias is my go-to girl. Yeah. I, I just know how she works with. Well, i got to practice against that now. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, the, the, the bad part was is Rias didn't even get close to anything. She was, like, way back in, in no man's land. And hey, your army's also beautifully painted. I like the green color. What inspired you for that color scheme? Um, well, it's, I, my first Legion box set that I bought, I painted them the factory um, blue and white, or blue and whites, and the browns, and I liked it. Came out good, but I figured a lot of people would be doing that, copying the same scheme. So I'm like, right. okay, what's going on with Legion? What are they doing? Okay, well they're moving south. Okay, well south isn't white; it's green. So Everblight can control his blight. I figured he decided to change their color scheme. Kind of like chameleons. They're yeah. blending in. Right. They're blending Excellent. in. Even though in the later fluff it says that they don't like the heat, but oh well, that's just life. <laughs> there you um, go. So yeah, they're mostly, they're greens and blues. Um, green dragon with blue um, highlights and stuff. Great. Well, nice looking army. Thanks. So beautiful army and a great player. Thanks for the game. Thanks, Russ. I had a great time. Hi, my name is Grant, and I'm the uh, TempleCon convention director. Um, Very nice. nice. Now, uh, so you, how long have you been... Well, into TempleCon. Have you been involved since the beginning? Been involved since the beginning, since day one. Um, I was pretty much, well, I was one of the uh, the two people that really conceived this to start out with, and yep. uh, we're going into our fourth year now, and yeah, it's last year was absolutely amazing. Man, anyone that that, that nice. went saw the saw the spectacle. Um, and it started out pretty big, or has it grown radically? Oh, it started out small. I mean, yep. it, it started. But you know, I. I I, I should say, you know, for a first year con in 2006, we had a great turnout, but in uh, we've, we've almost doubled our attendance every year since. Wow. 
and we're looking at you know we're we're looking at doing it again in 2009. Uh, so it's it, it's grown far beyond what we expected where we expected to be in four years. And you guys do a wide variety of games there, right? Wide variety of games, virtually everything you can think of from you know board games to uh, video games. Um, yep. We're we're actually bringing in you know PC stuff this year. We're we're bringing a whole like set of PC games this year too. Um, but yeah, we, we cover everything. I mean, we, we we tend to specialize. We have a lot of miniatures game miniatures gaming that's that's going sure. on, and a lot of CCG stuff. But you know, we're 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 branching out, and even the places that we haven't been so strong at in previous years, become pretty much become pretty much your full service gaming convention for uh, the East Coast. Great. Now there's some kind of TempleCon circuit now, right? Uh, yes, there is. It's called the Temple of Team Sto- uh, Temple of Steam Tour. Oh wow! And it is a series of events that we're running around, uh, running in New England and beyond, because there are some uh, running outside of New England, um, where you know players of various games, most specifically War Machine, which most of them have been so so far, uh, can come out, and you know we we try to get some of the TempleCon staff out there too, and they can compete for you know the usual prizes, and on top of that, we're giving away free admissions, full weekend admissions to uh, 2009, and oh, cool. we're doing this every single month. Uh, we've run like a total of. Six or seven of them were ready, ready just since Great. Uh, February. And, and so this has been a Danger Planet, of course, is one of those, right? Yep, we are at Danger Planet today, and this yep. is uh, this is the biggest one yet. Uh, by, wow. by far, this is the biggest round. This is incredible. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, uh, this this is I you know stop stopping by here here today has been a, a pretty amazing uh, experience to see as many people come out for something like this. Now, have you got it? Can you give us any details of what's going on at Temple TempleCon uh, 2009 here? Well, I can give you some. I can give you some. Uh, one thing that I can I can definitely say is that we're although we are a gaming con, we're actually moving into other areas of uh, yeah. fandom and entertainment and everything. So, uh, one thing at TempleCon 2009 you're going to see is live music. music. We're going to have you know live oh, wow. bands playing. We're going to have like we're going to have uh, we have a, a multitude of DJs that are signed on. So if you know if that's your your, your thing, you're definitely going to be able to come for that too. Great. Um, aside from that, we're adding a whole bunch of new games to our roster, so we got plenty of that going on. Yep. Uh, stuff you haven't seen in TempleCon before. Um, on top of that, we're you know one thing is mainly we've we've increased we've increased in space even over last year. So we're now taking up pretty much the entire Biltmore. And anyone that's been to the Biltmore in Providence knows how big of a hotel. It's a beautiful hotel too. Oh, it is. It is. And. Um, since you know, since since we, we we started running this at the Biltmore, we have absolutely been ecstatic with how how they how they've done things there. They treated us well, so you know this year now we have full grand ballrooms. We're working all off off end. We can fit maybe you know at least a couple thousand people in this place, right. and we're expanding out from, from from there as well. So this is this is the kind of, this is the year where, where we've really gone from the minor convention to now we're actually looking at like a major international convention. It's it, it's pretty exciting. That's very exciting. Well, I look forward to attending it. Oh, it was good meeting you today, Grant. I look forward to seeing you and everybody else there. Thanks for taking time to talk with us. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Hunter. Hey, Hunter, so you and I just played a game of War Machine, eh? Yeah. And how'd you do? One. You beat me badly. That was very well done. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your favorite part of your army today? That I could open up little crevices in my um, arc node. Yeah, you used your pistol blades, right? To poke a hole in my arc mages and kill striker, right? Yeah. Nicely done. What was your favorite part of the tournament today? Um, just how many games there was and, like, how big it was. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So do you play your Quicks Army all the time, or do you have different armies? I have, like, my dad has all the armies, so I, right. I go switching on and off. Now, how old are you? I'm 10. 10, and how long have you been playing for? been playing for, like, a year now. Wow, you're getting pretty good. Yeah. Is this your first tournament, or you played other ones? I played other ones. You did? And who's this next to you now? Uh, what? Who's next to you now? Who's that? My brother. It's your brother. brother what's your name? Tyler. Tyler. Now, you you play today, too? Yep. Of course. And what army did you bring? Troll Bloods. Troll Bloods. And now, your Troll Bloods are what color? What color are they? Red. Red. My Troll Bloods are red, too. That's a very cool color. So, how'd you do today? A uh, good two and two. Two and two. Very good. Very good. It's awesome. Now, how long have you been playing for? Um, same as Hunter. About a year, but how, how old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. So, you got a little little older. You know what? Now, this is your first tournament, too, or you guys played in other tournaments? Lots of other tournaments, Temple Con, all wow. Temple Con. Going to Gen Con, too. We're nice. going to Gen Con. So you guys are like 10 and 13, you've only been playing for about a year, and how many tournaments do you think you've been to? A lot. And Tyler's been in no quarter, because he beat, wow. he got the best trouble. Nice job, good job. Well, congratulations. I was, I remember, your troubles are awesome, I remember the Well, good job. Well, thanks for talking to me, guys.
Hi, my name is Norbert Brunhuber. I'm from New Jersey. I'm part of the New Jersey SOB, Somerville Ogren Boker. Yeah, we just heard from the uh, big finale there. Uh, you guys did pretty well today. We did really well. Uh, we were excited to come up here because, you know, the competition level was really high. That's yep. why I wanted to come up, but uh, we did really well. I think uh, me and a second team member got... Well, uh, full sweep wins, and nice. our third guy missed just one uh, win. So Very nice. Yeah. So you just took the whole thing? Took the whole thing. So we got the massive, very heavy trophy uh, that nice. belongs in our store now for at least six months. Great. Uh, until next TempleCon. And, and then we're, everybody's going to go down there now to fight, right? Or are you going to bring it up to TempleCon? I, I think we're going to try to accommodate some more people because we want to make sure everybody gets to play. Oh, but awesome. we're thinking of actually doing it at TempleCon as well. Is that's great because that's right. Yeah. Kind of a little closer to you, and it's at least uh, cause it's, uh, Providence, right? It's, yeah, so. it's more centrally located. Everybody, right. We're, we're going to come anyway because it's a great con. That'll be great. Now, how long have you guys been playing uh, War Machine Hordes? Uh, I've only pl- played a little less than uh, a year now. Wow. Yeah, not too much, and, and very little Hordes. Uh, yeah. So we were trying to get a lot of Hordes action in here. You guys must play pretty regularly, though. We we like to play in our league, so we yeah. play almost every week in our league and the occasional tournament that we do. And how many players do you guys normally play with in your group? Uh, we're very lucky. We have about 14 people, 16 nice. people. Yeah. Uh, you know, on any given night, maybe that goes as low as uh, eight. But right. we have a really good regular That's group. That's great. So it keeps you sharp. Yeah, you know, games. yeah, but you know, it's it's a matter of going um, outside your comfort zone, and so right. New England's the place to be in the immediate area. So we wanted to come up here. Well, cool. Yeah. So how would you like the tournament? It was a good time. I was right. one, which is nice. But how was how did we run? It shows you just how cool the War Machine uh, community, horse community type yeah. of people are. Even here, we felt very comfortable. Every minute, we were really welcome. Uh, store is excellent. The Danger Planet is an awesome place. It is a great store. Yeah, but uh, it's the level of camaraderie that we really appreciate. It was really, really fun. Great. Yeah. Now, is War Machine Horde your first miniature game? You've been playing for a while. Different games. Uh, I used to be a historical guy. Oh, there you go. Ancients. That's kind of unusual right. coming from historical. They don't. They kind of usually score this kind of thing. Yeah, right? they do. Uh, that's not right. I was getting a little tired about how <laughs> slow and incons- um, inconclusive a lot of the battles were, yeah. though. And uh, somebody, they were playing in the store quite a bit. My yeah. friends were. And they said, uh, so I finally said, you guys are playing so much, I really want to learn about it. And the moment uh, the press ganger, uh, Stubbs, sh- showed me the mechanic, the basic yeah. mechanic, I was hooked. Because right. it's just so elegant. It's like an elegant It is system. a very elegant game. Yeah. And now, Flames of War didn't do anything for you, though, huh? That wasn't, didn't draw you in? Or? No, I, I wasn't a big World War II guy in the first okay. place. And to collect another game with my limited time was yeah, <laughs> the right, question. Right. <laughs> Rich, you jumped in and never looked back, huh? Yes, absolutely. It's been something I really wanted to master because... Uh, we have a lot of good players, and I wanted to get as good as them, and I was behind them because, you know, yeah. they've been playing for so many years. So. Well, you've excelled now. Doing yeah, great. doing it. Right. is the master. Yeah. It's awesome. It's okay, but uh, I, I also got lucky, and, uh, you know, so I'm always looking to improve. I, uh, I'm going to be at Gen Con, so that'll be the next oh, that'd week. Oh, that be thing. fun. Yeah, and hopefully I'll be here for next month's uh, Danger Planet uh, practice for Gen Con. Great. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, so... And it was great being Russ, the famous <laughs> Russ. Man, it's <laughs> infamous. It was infamous. Well, Rick, I'm glad. It, thanks for talking with us today. Yeah. You're listening to the D6, D6. D6. D6 Generation. We just love playing around. Hi, welcome to Incoming, the D6 Generation Mailbag. Uh, and this is our second mailbag. This is going to cover episodes roughly 7 through 11. Yep. and Or probably 10, because 11 is going up this week. Um, and the goal of our mailbag is really to sort of, you know... Take off the the show parts of the show. We're just going to go through here, you know, no glitz, no glamour. Get in touch with you, our listeners. Right, just read through some of the mail you sent in. Uh, hopefully, in the near future, we'll add real voicemail so you guys we can actually hear you guys. But for now, we're just taking going through the emails, things you might have sent the forums, uh, and trying to respond to let you know that we are we appreciate all your feedback. It really helps us get excited about the next show and, and to know people are listening to us. And a key would be try to keep your email concise. Brevity is the soul of wit. Exactly. Okay, uh, don't bloviate. So without further further ado, uh, Nils, who is Nils the guy that won the contest? Um, I think it may well Maybe, be. but in any case, uh, if you want to know about that, go tune into uh, episode, episode 11. 11. Uh, so Nils wrote in about painting and dipping. He was commenting on our episode where we talked about our painting tips, um, and he recommends using this miracle dip formula he worked out, which is a mix of one-to-one mid-wax polyurethane stain with paint thinner. And then he kind of brushes it on his figures. So it's not so much a dip. So it's not so much a dip. Um, and what it does is it's sort of like a really heavy-duty wash. 
Um, and I've actually played with this before. I, I did it for my Starship Troopers figures. So I actually physically dipped them. I dipped them in the mid-wax mixture and then, like, whipped them around with gloves After on. you painted a base coat, right? I did, yeah. yeah. So first I primed them, like, the key color, like red. And then you dip them, and the dip sort of tones them into a brownish color and gets yeah. into the crevices. Gets in the crevices. And it and does, does give you a very organic look. Looks good on bugs, uh, tyranids and things. Um, mm. But I don't Arachnids. know. It, it, it's, uh, it's definitely true painters frown upon it. I guess, yeah, but the I, purists. It, it, I, I wouldn't do it for like a, a a centerpiece model or anything like that. But it's great for skellies too. Yeah, oh, lots it's, of skellies. It's great for skellies. Earthworm, undead yeah. things you want to look gross and kind of slimy, right? Yeah. Mm, maybe I should try that then. Yeah, it's worth a try. Uh, now, also, uh, Luke from the Netherlands writes in uh, via DACA that he's having trouble leaving iTunes reviews. So on DACA, I posted how you can leave an iTunes reviews, but actually, I'm going to put a link up on our website that if you have. In order to leave an iTunes review, you have to have iTunes installed on your machine. You can't just go to some magical Apple website. You have to have iTunes installed, and it's click on the link, and the link will then take you. It'll pop open your iTunes, and it'll take you right to our page. If um, you don't want to do the link thing, you just open up iTunes, type in, click on the podcast, go to the Apple Store, click on the podcast link on the left-hand side, and then type in the D6 generation in the search box. And you'll come to the D6 Generation show. When that shows up, you'll be able to leave an iTunes review that way. And that's how you do it if you're going to leave a positive review. If you're going to leave a negative review, we like to store all of those at the D6 Defenestration website. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Uh, And, and Craig, you want to mention if they do decide to leave an iTunes review, also email us? Yes. Especially the international. It's very difficult for us to track the international iTunes reviews because we have to go to each country individually, and there's a whole bunch of countries out there. Who knew? Right. And um, so if you leave us an iTunes review. Also throw us an email. Throw us an email. Give us a heads up so we can mention you in the mailbag. And we'll give you a shout out. And we'll give you a shout out. And, and then we go read we'll your cool review, it. too, in the Switzerland section or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. All right. And now last, one little critique we had about our sound quality issues. Um We've got since the episode like three or four. It sounds got a lot better here, but um, sometimes when we're all in the same room, um, my configuration is less than optimal, and I have a tendency to move away from the microphone. And also, um, sometimes Craig and Rafer spread out kind of weird, and yeah. weird things happen. Um, you'd be surprised how many small things can go wrong and totally screw the sound of yeah, a podcast. Absolutely, one wire in the wrong. Place. It's really amazing. So. Um, we try to do our best, but every once in a while we, we do yeah. goof it up. And we think we fixed it tonight, but if it's not fixed, it's our wives' fault. Right, right. And if you well, really sh- it's going to be next episode when I'm back in the room, you know. Now, in, in this episode and in episode 11, we've included some interviews. In the mailbag, I got some interviews from uh, the uh, the big uh, War Machine tournament we went to. And there's some of those also in the other one. And that sounds a little different. That's because I'm recording on a very cheesy, my little MP3 player has a built-in microphone on it. So and it'll actually work great if now that we figured out how to yeah, use Yeah, but I was still learning about it, and it's okay. It picks up a lot of ambient noise, but, you know, it's, it's uh, what are you going to do? It's, it's, it's an MP3 player microphone. But, yeah, but there right. you have it. But you can understand what people are saying, so that's reasonable, I guess. All right. Uh, Craig, you want to take the next one here? Uh, is that Surrey Monster from it, DACA? I believe it is. And various others have also sent uh, emails and messages about the mission and terrain cards and the uh, Mighty Empire's rule sets. And those I have all those available, but to avoid any sort of um, IP problems, we're not putting them up um, on the website. You just have to email me, and I will send them out to you. So let me know what specific system you want and which uh, which cards, which types of cards, and what uh, Mighty Empire's rules you're interested in, and I'll send them out. And please, 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 if you get them, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Uh, right now they're working great for my my campaign um but i really want to know how they work for other people so that's that rafe how about you take tom cares okay and then do you want to do the um uh, maddie and jeff from Podhammer after oh, did that I Craig? Skip? oh i skipped yeah maddie, you and skip jeff. maddie and jeff oh jeff from Podhammer got married as we noted in episode 10 and maddie who you'll know from uh pod hammer also emailed us to let us know that during the speeches at Jeff's wedding, and then Jeff actually mentioned that today in another email, yeah. uh, that during the speeches at Jeff's wedding, Maddie actually was heard to give the the new couple's hopes for a bright future a two-plus with a re-roll, which makes it the first ever D6G rating for marriage. So way to go, Jeff, and uh, we're going to celebrate our own little achievement right there. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. We're that's... already in a wedding. That's there amazing. we go. 
All right, Tom uh, Kerr from our own D6G email writes in and had some questions and thoughts about comp and balance and tabletop games, mainly from listening to Jeff at Podhammer. He's an avid listener, as I am too, and they do talk about it a lot uh, in a good way. They talk about the the struggles that they have with it, and he's asking, um, do any tabletop war games compensate for this sort of what he he says is unbalancedness, unbalancedness to um, to the games, uh, do they offer any updates? Now, I guess my one answer to that would be, well, of course, War Machine and Hordes, you don't have any comp problems just because of the way their game is designed, at least when in, in tournament settings. And, of course, comp only affects you in a tournament setting. Um, as far as tabletop war games compensating this by offering updates, much like a computer game does, I'm not really sure where he's driving oh, at that. No. Russ Craig, oh, do you guys have a thought on that? Does it, I'd actually. like to respectfully disagree with the gentleman from Hollywood. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I think comp does affect you at home as well as a tournament. Yeah, you just don't call I, it comp. Yeah. What you do is go, oh, man, was that a cheesy list. You ass, I can't believe you brought four Land Raiders to a battle, you son of a... Is yeah, that how yeah, it goes? Yeah, that's, so that's pretty, pretty comp. much how it goes. That's yeah. comp without a score. Yep. And, okay, that's true. Um, that's true. And game companies do try to fix this. Yep. They all do. I mean, look at Sorsha. Right. In, uh, and in War Machine. Privateer Press probably does it the closest to the way a computer game does it. Which is, they're, they do not rewrite the rules, they simply tweak, and then they also release new pieces that fix things. Like, the greatest example of this, and Rafe, I'm surprised you missed this, is that War Machine has been accused of being infantry heavy now and Jack Weak. Mm, yeah, yeah. And it's cheesy to bring all infantry because it's supposed to be a game of War Machine. And they, well, what they've done now in Legends, they're not rewriting the rules, they're not you know, changing how old models work, they're just saying, here's a new tool that will now make your old pieces work better or differently that you now let you compensate uh, for that, and it was just a great episode of Pod Thralls actually that talked about um, an all Crick's list of totally jacks with a new jack caster they have just crushing the composition. So that's a great example of it. Now GW does it too; they just do it differently. They when they rethink their rules for an edition, they specifically like in, in version five, a lot of their score their win, their mission winning settings are designed to force you to take. Less cheesy, quote unquote, lists, right? right? Your troop choices are the only scoring units, yep. um, and tournaments do the same thing. So they all try to fix it. All game companies understand it; they just approach it differently. Right. But I think, as far as what he's talking about with the way computer programs do it, is is best given the example of Sorsha or um, the Signar one there, whose their oh. powers were considered to be Haley. too powerful. Haley, yeah. yeah. So in the reprint, they were toned, they toned down. down. Right. Exactly. Yes. So yeah, yes, true. game yeah. companies. On occasion, do right. do that. Yes. Right. Yep. And we like the way they do. Yep. We're glad that whenever a company like... watches that. And I have to say, I give I give kudos to Games Workshop 2 in uh, Episode 9 because I think they did address a lot of that stuff in 5th edition. Yep. It remains to be seen how much of it. As, you know, Once people start playing, and I'm sure other things will arise, but I think they did a good job. <laughs> right. right. That's right. what we call a backhanded compliment. <laughs> and when Russ like gives there's... those to Games Workshop, he wears a big <laughs> iron cestus on his hand with spikes on it. All righty. So, uh, Nathan... Low, is that right? Uh, emails us and he asked us about. Um, Actually, had, he gave advice. He did. He gave us excellent advice. Hopefully, <laughs> I say hopefully because I haven't tried it yet. But it, it, he's not the only one. Actually, a couple of people also emailed us on this. I mentioned in the painting thing we did that I would have been primerless since GW stopped making the primer I like so much. And it turns out, I guess a lot of people in the know have turned to Auto Body Primer uh, for black base coating. And I guess they've said it works almost exactly the same as GW Primer. It doesn't fill in the gaps. Um, and it's great fun. So um, I'm going to try that out. I really I can't wait to try it out now. But he was not the only one. A lot of people said that. So uh, if you're out there looking for Primer 2, apparently, head on over to the Auto Body Store, get some vehicle Primer. It's cheap and works, apparently. Yeah. I'll let you know more in a future episode if that works out for me. <laughs> Craig? Okay, this is from James. And uh, he is a self-professed PP fanboy. Who wants Go to James! know more about 40K? Oh, boo, James. Leave the dark side, James. <laughs> Leave the dark side before do the it, ship James. sinks. Don't do it, James! Don't do it! Because it's sinking. <laughs> does 5th edition uh, 40K actually provide a tactical challenge? I would say it absolutely does. And I think that Russ and I both discovered this is as a far more challenging environment to play in than 4th edition. By far. By far. With its change in missions and the way that things are scored... The way that line of sight is changed and hand to hand, there is no 
freebie, I think, anymore. No, 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 uh, no brainer choices to go with. You have actually have to have a mixed force. You have to have a tactical plan ahead of time, and you have to have some idea of how all of these things are going to interplay. Um, and I take exception to. Oh no, you know what? The evil corporation thing. I don't know. Every other day, I agree with it. But <clears throat> yeah, you anyway. were there. You've been there when they were evil. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, and you know what can um, swing somewhere. back. Swing that back the other way is if he listens to um, 40K Radio's episodes on the game day coverage. Yeah, they, oh, yeah. they, they don't yep. sound like an evil corporation on yep. that. At there are all. evil elements to the corporation, but the guys at the, the top who aren't started there. it right. are just awesome no. gamer guys, just like you and I. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah definitely. The lawyers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ray, but, but it is. All right, first ones to the wall when I take over. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mostly agree with everything Craig said on that one. Okay. Mostly. All right, Craig, you're up next. Uh, okay. Uh, Matt Getson uh, emails that he started his own campaign system. He wanted to tell us a little bit about it, and he sent a detailed email about how um, the each game is staged based on wins and losses, and that his group, um, I believe he's saying that his group would uh, actually succeeded. Um, and he also came up with a couple ways to rectify some of the seeming inherent problems with other campaigns. So we're definitely looking through this, and I'm trying to make sense of it. I'm in the middle of my own campaign, so and the other two aren't really interested in campaigns, especially for 40K right, uh, right now. Well, we're right always on the lookout for campaigns that work, so but thanks for sending it in. Us. Yep, absolutely. And anybody else got some cool campaigns ideas, send them on yep, in, yep. and we'll, maybe and we'll do a campaign we're definitely special. checking it out. Right. And now I've got one here from... Uh, um, Gav Doro, um, and he wanted to talk about um, the differences in 40k versus privateer uh, 40k pricing. Yeah, that that, uh, that that would be in Australia the 40k pricing versus oh, ver- yes. uh, versus in America. Right. So what his his concern was like um, is he, per- he wanted to know if your opinion has changed any since oh, we had our oh, two. Oh, right. I had I had a big long discussion about yeah. this. I forgot about this online. Yeah. So basically, he was cons- he was um, after I had earlier said a lot of issues with GW and then in episode 9 I was very excited about 5th edition um, I just wanted to say that I think uh, in general um, I like where 5th edition has gone uh, but I think there are some uh, um, and it's not just a small tweak I, I think when I initially because I think in episode 1 he said hey Rusty you know episode 1 you said it's a 20 year old game and it shows and it needs a total rewrite um, and in reality um uh, and I thought a small tweak in 5th edition wouldn't help it. 5th edition is not a small tweak. It's a major rewrite under the parameters of we can't change the codexes. I still think that the game could really do with a total reboot, as we say. I'd like to see the whole thing redone from the ground up. But under the parameters that they want to redirect the codexes, it's as good as it could be done, I think. Um, I re- really like it. Um, and as far as the Australian dollar versus the U.S. I, dollar, that just sucks for you guys. Yeah, I don't pretend to understand that. GW pricing has always been a little bit strange. That's I think that's across the board pricing in, yeah. in Australia, stuff that comes from other countries. And that's in Canada also. The Australian dollar and the Canadian dollar are both very, very similar in well, strength right now to the U.S. dollar, if not a little bit stronger. But here's a secret. I have no idea about Australian government. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that. There are import tariffs in many countries. That's true. So if, if the Australian import tariffs are very, very high, the exchange rate may have less to do with it than the import that's tariffs. That's true, and I so do that, think that that's could be. Canada. So check into that. <clears throat> check into that yep. and vote appropriately. Yeah, exactly. Your, go- your government <laughs> may your be taking counts. more money than you think. Right. Uh, okay, and next we have um, – Rafe, you want to take the next one here? about? Uh, yeah, we, from yeah, we have a um, post from DACA from Two Heads Talking. He's saying – Hey, can you explain these inside jokes? And he says, can't understand RF. And That's I don't know what he means fire. by that. Rapid fire. It... Oh, rapid, rapid fire. Okay. <clears throat> well, rapid fire is, you know, I guess the, the, the humor either gets you or it now, doesn't. He actually has hearing problems, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it could be. Or, or yeah, you know, say, perhaps he's it's blaming it on his age. Too rapid, too fast for him or not. Right. But I'll tell you what I like about it is it sets up the show. So... Craig, when he does the does it, it's meant to be humorous, but also it's meant to be our table of contents for the show, which I find to be the most creative and fun part listening to it when I hear it live. Um, so I'm trying to see uh, how often Inside. do you all pull the curtains back to see the inner workings. I'd love to do that, um, that, 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 that when I get on uh, VH1's um, Behind the Music, <laughs> behind, behind the, the podcast. podcast. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, do we have inside jokes? 
I mean, well, it's quite possible that we have them and we don't know that they're actually think, inside jokes. I think what happens is if you're a new listener to the show and you hear us teasing them about Hollywood or things like that, there's okay. always going to be – what we try to do is the content sections of the show, you don't have to be a regular listener to enjoy – here's a behind-the-curtains thing. You don't have to be a regular listener to enjoy a review of Dawn of War, the airplane game, or you know our tournament thing. But as we're talking – a lot of times we refer back to an earlier thing that came right. up with an earlier the episode. Foundations been laid. We, over we don't now try to make an episode. Sometimes we we do goof up and make an inside joke amongst just our friends up here that no one would get unless you're local. We try right. to do that, but we do try to reward. I would say long term listeners with little Easter eggs that refer back to earlier shows. Right. Yeah. So we do try yes. to do that. You don't need to listen to them in order to under to really appreciate the bulk of the episode, but if you have been listening to them. You will start giggling too because you'll remember back when someone mentioned some silly little reference about something. Right. Um, so that's the ideas behind that. Yeah. So there's excellent. always going to be a little bit of that, but um, yeah. yeah. Now next we have Dan sent us a D six G email and he's really mad at us because we're making him spend all kinds of money. And uh, we, we get a lot of those actually. We do get a lot. We get of those. a lot. Of those. What, what you, you need guys to know is that Russ has us spending as much money as you guys. So. He admitted last night that he's a member of a secret group that spends more gaming money than they they like actually get gaming money taken out of their credit cards every month. It's, I think yes. it's the Illuminati. I'm not it's sure. The Illuminati. And then he went on a big rant about how he has lots of hammerheads in his area, and we should talk to Yak Face if we don't believe him. But I believe you because I think they're everywhere. Yeah, they they're like plankton in the gaming <laughs> ocean. Oh, and Dan, Dan does say hi, John. Good job at Adepticon. So I think yes. Dan and Yak. Yeah. I think they both. I want to do that on a roundtable, guys. I'm going to talk about hammerheads. All right. Well, next up, uh, Rafe, you want to take the next one here? Yeah. What do we got? Uh, Dave Tennessee. Yep. Right. D six G email. He says we need a voicemail. Need a voicemail number. Uh, Yes. Uh, uh, It's on our radar. And let me just say sponsorship. No, no, no. We're just uh, you know we're just getting our feet wet here. Yeah. Well, we do have some a little bit. You know, we have some advertisers now. We got some some really dedicated fan sponsors, which is exciting. And that is going to allow us to have voicemail very soon, along with some of the fun stuff. Um, So we are working on that. And if you want to help that come faster, just you know sponsor a segment. Yeah. And Dave also was giving a shout out here to the Games Workshop website because now it seems to be supporting all of the specialist games. That is nice. Yeah, so that it's nice. they're not shying away from Battlefleet Gothic, Blood Bowl, yeah. or even the really real the, the old classics like Bombers over to Sulphur River or uh, is that really Gorka classic? Orca. <laughs> Gorka Orca is a classic. Of course, it's a classic. Well, not Bombers over the Sulphur oh, River. Oh please, that was in uh, White Dwarf, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was a boxed publication. I think it started as a White Dwarf Maybe. article. Though. Yeah, okay, but Gorka Morka was good. Yeah. All right. Um, now, this one, Craig, maybe you want to take this because it's about uh, he liked the, the Grump Gamer part. Um, well, that, that's, I think, kudos for the fair. Actually, he's talking more about kudos to you because you gave a fair 40K review even though you hate uh, oh. his workshop. Well, thank you. <laughs> I do appreciate that. And my, my favorite part, Russ, is he actually tells you how to um, say his name. So I think you should try oh, it. Does he? At the end of his. Oh, yes. His so his why don't you give it a try? Okay, here we go. Stand back. Uh, Keith, that part's easy. Yeah, Keith, uh, Rizowski. Yeah, see, I don't see it. It's very challenging. Yeah, it's uh, right. Rye like the drink. Zow yeah. is in cow with a Z and the ski. Yeah, I and I, I like that one. he answers my Hollywood Minute request for nicknames, so he's known as Rizzo. Right. Right. Cool. All right, now Love Craig, it. you should definitely take this one. It's got historical on it. versus sci-fi, and okay, well. Um, hey, we've we've talked about this a couple times. We're all very much sci-fi, fantasy, industrial fantasy, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have done historical stuff, actually. Each of us had – you had a Flames of War army, right, Rafe? Yeah, yep. Rafe and I sure did. didn't. Still always do, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's what, uh, I knew that you did, and I know that I do. So we all had I, – I still do. I think, Russ, did you get rid of yours? Nope, I still have no? one. Yeah, so we all have them, and it's a great game, and we enjoy it. Um I don't know why. I mean, I I think I, I'm, I think I speak for at least Russ and I when I say it's a little too real, a little too close to home. Uh, the fantasy gives you a little more of a leeway, a little more of a cushion between you and actual physical violence and death. Um, yeah. And especially when you're talking recent warfare like World War II, I know Russ has a huge problem, which is odd that he chose the Germans, <laughs> playing the Germans that well, killed millions in, of people. No one played the Germans, so I went in with the idea. I'll okay. play the army. Nobody plays. Plus, I like tanks. Okay, there you go. So, makes sense, part. except for that whole I hate yeah, the fact a Nazi that they part, really killed right. millions of people. Right. 
Um, yeah. No, it, it's true, though. I mean, there's a little bit like, you know, you watch a special on uh, the History Channel and then you go play Flames of War. And I, I, I feel kind of funny because I'm like, you know, people right. really died. And here right. I am playing a game. And it, it's a little bit of an unsettling feeling for me. Right. I, I guess I think of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's... And uh, as far as Star Grunt goes, you are not the first person to recommend Star Grunt. And I'm still looking into it. But I've got to tell you, 40K 5th Edition is really taking over my sci-fi miniature jones right now and star grunt from everything i've been able to see so far does not really look like it's um it's my kind of game it looks a lot more technical a lot more complicated and um just not real it's not really hit any button so far but i'm still looking into it okay um now uh let's see this next one is from adam thomas and he wants he gets into some uh, information on reviewing his own game called uh Duel of Steel, right? Yeah. Um, now he's got a um, he's working on this game, and he wanted to know if we could take a look at it. Um, we get a lot of emails. We will try to look at some of this stuff, but it's just a lot. I mean, we have a yeah, lot of stuff. We get to a through. lot of people asking us to look um, at so their stuff. We'll definitely, uh, you know, if we get some time, we'll take a look at it. Um, but you know, also we're not game design experts in any way by any we, stretch. Of the we know what we like to play, <laughs> but. But um, yeah, I, I yep. don't know what it takes to design a game. I've yep. never tried it myself. He also wants an eight, uh, AT forty three review, which we're working on. Yeah, AT forty three, we are working on. I got a, a couple good friends of mine are avidly getting more and more into it, um, and I am scheduled to appear on a future episode of This Week in War Gaming. And guess what my role is? I don't know. They're going to do AT forty three. Yeah. And my role is the um, open minded skeptic. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I'm going to be there <laughs> trying to, um, you know. Uh, Okay. You know, kind of get them to convince me why I should like it, and I'll yep. try to ask the tough questions. There you yeah, go. So we'll see and how that he goes. also wants us to review Infinity, which is a new game. And I did go to their website and look at their models because he says it's possible to fall in love with an entire range of models at once. And I did not fall in love with the entire range. There were a couple that were eh, well, not 100%, but there are some amazing models there. They're, mm. they're uh, near future sci-fi. Uh, there's a lot of anime flavor to it, but some amazing detail. Just a really, really, really beautiful. Un- unfortunately, on my home computer, the website is really, really slow. Mm. Okay, so... Ray, if you want to take the next one, it's from yes, your good friend I think John you Potter. Take the next one. Yeah, so this is from my old college buddy John Potter. Writes in on the D6G email. Now you've heard us mention John before. He writes in that he's nervous about D and D four changes, and that's because uh, John's run the longest running email play by email campaign that I have ever know of. It's probably going on ten fifteen years actually. Um, I can't call it mine anymore. I'm not in it. But so he so he was very happy to he he's not a miniature gamer and he's not a war gamer per se but he does like to listen to our podcast and he was happy to hear us cover D and D and I do want to pull the curtain back and say you know that is our that is one of our goals it's, we do focus on those miniature games and tabletop games but we do like to cover cover other game topics too um, and so his concern is he's not necessarily sure if these new changes as we were all excited about are actually good changes. Um, I like that he says he doesn't want to sound too much like a grognard. I thought that was an awesome word. So, but he did order the books, and you know I haven't heard from him. I should email him, or maybe he'll email into the show. I haven't heard if he's liked the new ones or not. I don't I know. Like it. I, I, but you know, again, it, your mileage is going to vary. It's, it's, I think it's kind of like forty k fifth because if you've been away for a while and you come back to it, you're going to be like, oh, this is cool. But if you are a current D&D fan, you might get derailed. Although I say that, and I know a lot of current D&D players who are just yeah. loving it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I haven't heard any negative negativity from the Yeah. The uh, I, I don't know anybody D&D who really like I it. Know. Uh, I, I hear a lot of some grumblings on the internet, but it sounds like people who have actually tried it yet. They just read the rules and they don't like it. Right. Like The people who have tried it seem to be in love with it. So. Yeah. Um, all right. And uh, Kevin here, I'll take this one. He wants uh, he's got some free rules he'd like us to look at for some other miniature war games. Um, and again, Kevin, we like to look at some of this stuff, but we, we just get a lot of these requests. Uh, and so, um, we, if we, if we can, we will. There, there, the, the, the web is full of free downloadable games. Yeah. And, and um, here's my problem. I, I am at my core, uh, I am a miniature war gamer. Yeah. And, but for me, so on the table has to look cool. Yeah. So right there, I... You know, that's good. Now, you'd say, well, why don't you just play with your models? But the second part of the miniature wargaming thing is having the cool fluff behind that exact guy for right. me. That's why I like and games. And those beautiful books to flip through. Right. And, and so that's why I like games like uh, 
War Machine and 40K so much because they have such a deep, deep background that ties right into the models who are clearly built on them. And even, and even that's why I'm really getting back to board games, yeah. you know, because so many of the board games now, like Tannhauser, have a nice, rich, even though it's short, a little bit of fluff in there, good-looking models, great-looking artwork. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I still think it's awesome that there's little companies starting yeah. out doing this kind of stuff, but um, it's but hard for me to get through. the key money. for what you're saying is that it exists outside of the web. Yes. You're holding these books. You're right. flipping through these glossy, beautiful the, all the because there's a lot of beautiful artwork even on those those free downloads. It's just yes. it's one step removed from being able to right. just you know step away from the computer, go upstairs, and flip through your book while you're sitting at the in the living room next to your wife, pretending that you. No, all know. right, Craig. So this next <laughs> one's from Ireland. Why don't you take? Actually, that one? I think this next one may be somebody special. This is my buddy Ryan. I think this is your buddy oh, Ryan okay. from Dublin. Yes, from Dublin. I he, love when he writes it. Yeah, he agrees that the games are him. hard, and he says Russ is a monkey. What? I think that's pretty much. How am I a monkey? <laughs> Didn't he? He say, does. Oh, silverback gorilla. But you know that. Oh, well, gorilla, that's when it comes right Rave down to it. Rave called me a silverback gorilla. Right, but go. I'm gonna go with monkey. All right. Monkey, and so he wants to call you Cornelius, as yeah. you know, from Planet of the Apes. Yeah. And he's got a little it's very dear to his heart there. because he is a chimpanzee that is archaeologist. A lot of letters for yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so we're glad to hear from from Ryan. Yeah, and look for those Easter and eggs. And of course, like all good Irishmen, he loves potatoes. So in Gaelic, it takes four words to say thanks. Let's go, Ray. Go read oh. math. The well, you're the Irishman here. You're yeah, the yeah. I'm right. uh, way too many generations removed from Gaelic. All right, Craig. This next one says he feels your pain. And um, and total war review request. Oh yes. So that would. Why don't you go ahead and yeah. he feels my pain because he's used to being the only person in his gaming group that wants to play a specific game, and then everybody in his gaming group did end up playing his game, and he thinks that you're all going to. I, I, don't, know, I don't know. But anyway, I I have hopes. I have hopes, Andrew. I have hopes. And as for Total War, Russ, take it away. Well, I haven't played Total War. Um, although it sounds like uh, I've seen them, of course, being a vid game junkie myself. Uh, and, you know, you're mentioning civil, he mentioned civilization here too. It's, he says total war kind of bridges the gap between civilization and Starcraft. Uh, right. So it's like a real time, uh, four X strategy game. And that's, you know, like, um, I've talked about sins of a solar empire, I think briefly before that games like that. Uh, the new civilization game, it's turn-based, but it's cool. Um, I do kind of like the real-time strategy games that branch out into beyond just how fast can you rush, but it's actually got more economy and stuff in there. Those are neat. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't tried the Total War series, but I will take a look at them um, when I get around to it. Although right now I'm keep getting distracted by the new stuff. You know, same problem. It's something new and shiny on the, on the ground. i got to go look at it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Next we have Adam Thomas. And he says he likes... Um, our oh, mulling mechanics. Is, this is we've already heard from him. Oh, he yes, he earlier, earlier in the mailbag. Email earlier, earlier in this. That's the second one. Okay, thanks, Adam. But we still can't yeah, we'll actually like scroll down. We're getting right. some repeats. We're skipping yeah. that one yet. We're going to skip a couple here. Our mailbag is so full. It's overflowing. We're, we're out of and order. And we're coming up on midnight. Right um, now, James uh, wants to know more, more, more on campaigns and standard GW versus PP money money issue issue. Um, First of all, I'll take this part. Sure. Maori, I believe, is how that's pronounced, but I'm not sure. Um, and did you put a quotation on my? I don't know. I didn't do that. Anyway, uh, Maori. Ma- my my apologies to any of the Aboriginal tribesmen of New Zealand who may li- be listening. I do butcher that on a regular basis, but actually, I'm going to take exception to the word butcher because if I called it like Maori, that would be butchering. Maori and Maori are pretty. I'm not saying Maori is correct, but I'm saying it's co- it's it's common enough that it's not really butchering, as far as you know, I'm concerned. All right. Okay. And he also says he's a solid privateer fanboy now because um, he talks about the pro- which is cheaper and that you have need less models to play. F- you know, privateer yeah. regularly. Yeah, and I'm, is- I, I, that's an argument that I've just. Yeah, you can't I, win it, so I, don't try. No, um, <laughs> actually, I, uh, I'm not going to try because I don't care. Can't win. Uh, that's, that's it. Oh, and he wants to know how to join the Hollywood fan club. Oh, and it says you criticize Craig and admit to being a Privateer Press fanboy. Done, done and, done. and he done. He loves it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so keep up the good work on that one, Rafe, apparently. I don't know. How do we join the Hollywood fan club? Uh, I think it consists of two people, so you're in. 
you're in. There you go. You actually have to be the treasurer because there's it, already a president and a vice president. And when he says two people, that includes himself. That's right. He no, it doesn't. It's, it's Ryan and, and it's Ryan and his wife. <laughs> uh, All right. And I got James we, from New. I've got. I mean, I've got. Excuse me, Avion from from uh, Daca Forms. Okay. Take it, All right. Um, He's got, two, he's got a good question here. Question of, of shadows over Camelot. He, he looked at them online, and it didn't seem that complex to him. And when we said it plays about an hour, he was kind of wondering if it's too simple and kind of a kiddies game. <laughs> the answer to that is no, um, not a kiddies game. Great for adults. The rules are simple, but I'd say the play and the strategy and the, the, the fact of having the trader is, is complex enough to keep yeah, many... I- I would Mature say adult or young adult interested. Yeah. Simple rules yeah. doesn't mean uh, simple game. Right. I think that's yeah. important. Chess, yeah. chess is pretty simple. Yeah, chess is simple rules, but it's no Good checkers. Example. Right. So, uh, so yeah. 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 And then he goes on in, about my question about why I felt hollow about playing an MMO game. And, and uh, his insight is that could it be that you've seen the true meaning of the game, which is to play – to play and play and play and to play and to keep playing and keep giving Blizzard thirteen dollars a month right. and and uh, yeah I think that's yeah, I, I think definitely there's think probably that's part some of it. truth to that oh definitely I definitely agree with that yeah. absolutely yeah it's good insight okay and then Craig, Craig you want to take the next one it's yeah, about McCaber from uh, sent us an email at the D six G email and as far as leagues at uh, league and um, campaign systems go he likes the blood bowl league system which i've never played blood bowl but everybody around me loved it at one point or another and um so i i haven't looked at it recently but i know that that did that system did work very well and i don't know how it would scale to a different system <laughs> that's funny Okay, right. Russ. This all one's right. all you. This one, yeah, this is all you, the Russ. summary is various challenges to Russ on War Machine Hordes. All right, bring it. Paul from Scotland. All right, Paul. Let's do this. I'm just kidding. Good fun, Paul. <laughs> so here we go. So, Paul, we highlighted a couple of statements. Basically, Paul wanted to take me to task on some of the things we talked about, I think, in our Mulling Mechanics episode, yep. where I mentioned that I kind of implied that perhaps Privateer had a more streamlined combat system than GW. So here was his, the crux of one of his comments was, uh, quote, you mentioned that GW has numerous roles to resolve and attack, implying that War Machine is more streamlined. It seems to me that War Machine and Warhammer Fantasy battles are both pretty much similar. And he goes on to say that, you know, War Machine, War Warhammer Fantasy has a role to hit, modified by something, and the modifiers. War Machine has a role to hit, modified by something, and the modifiers. It has a damage role, modified something. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> the, yes, but the big, what I was trying to say was, there's an additional set of roles involved in uh, fantasy that are not involved in 40k. I think I mean, it's it, three it, rolls to three rolls. GW, no, because there's no saving throws. The extra roll is the saving throw. You roll a hit, you roll a wound, you roll a save. Not in War Machine. You roll a hit, you roll a wound, you're done. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're saving the saving throw mechanic. Um, and in um, there's also no charts. There's no charts, right? In, it's all math. In in War Mach- in fantasy in 40k and fantasy, you have to memorize. Albeit it's not very challenging, but you have to memorize the the to hit roll for the various um, ballistic skills, uh, ballistic and skills, and weapon skills. skills. Whereas in forty in War Machine and Hordes, toughness. it's just simply you roll two dice, you add your stat, and compare it to the other guy's defensive value, which are both on cards at the table. So um, it is different. Um, I think it's substantially different, uh, but you know we can disagree on which is easier. But I, I do think that um, it is more straightforward. Um, in, in that one, especially when you compare it to 40k, because of well, he's comparing it to fantasy, but in, in those cases where the um, on the on the GW side where there are not modifiers to the saving throw, you get these problems where the saving throw can't be beaten, um, and so you get these design complexities where you've got a situation where there's cer- certain things you can't get through it. Where in War Machine and Hordes, it just increases their armor value, but you, you can always bring more to the party to make your attack roll more va- more powerful too. So there's ways to work around certain situations that you can't in in Games Workshop, if the guy's got a two plus invulnerable with a reroll, or a three plus invulnerable with a reroll, which can happen with far seers and their retinues and fortune and things, um, then you, there's really no tactical way to overcome it as the as the other guy. Besides, just unless you got the one weapon that does it like a psychic or something. Um, so that was my comment about that. Uh, and then to make a point about a general assumption within the podcast, the private suppressor rules are clear, it's easier to follow. Um. Well, and he says that he, it's hard to keep up with them. 
because and he does a, say that he likes Privateer Press and he plays War Machine. Yeah, no, he says he says that he thinks they're hard to keep up with because there's um, FAQs and uh, the, and the FAQs dwarf the original rules now, um, possibly. Uh, except that I wasn't saying that there's no FAQs for War Machine or Hordes, but I was saying they're better organized than a lot of other companies, and I would include GW with that. Yes, it's true that there's an FAQ on their site, but they've also reprinted their original rulebook, and most of those FAQs have been in- incorporated in it. So if you own Remix, you have 99% of the, re- the modified rules and FAQs. Um, they also reprint the cards in small packs that you can rebuy. Uh, okay, yeah, they're, they're getting some more money off of you, but you, you buy the pack of cards and you get the new thing. On the GW side, you've got the problems where you've got things like Adepticon with a, with a 90-page FAQ thing, or you've got the direwolf fact for fantasy, which Jeff from Pottermore asked him how big it was. He had no idea because there's pages and pages and pages of PDFs for each codex. So to, to really know the tournament rules for GW, I would say is more challenging than it is for Privateer Press. Because that's one place I go. I got my rule books. I go to the Privateer Press website. I've got a database of FAQs. With GW, I got to know whose version of the FAQs we're running. Um, I got to print them out, and I got to go through them and figure them all out. It, it's you know, and, and what they're addressing use, all that. Though. Yeah, they're they're fixing it. I'm not saying that, but I'm talking to the point I made. Yeah, yep, so yep. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but I, it does seem like GW is getting the message on that, so I'm I'm excited to see them uh, square that away. Yeah. So sorry, it was a long winded one, but uh, I wanted to make sure there I gave go. Paul his fair response. All right, I think you can take the next one there. Or somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, Robert uh, Robert writes into the D6G mail. He writes in a lot of good. Good comments about some um, systems he's looking at with some integrated rules. He's talking about when we did the you go, I go and, and doing that. But the thing I want to um, highlight on is he says he's new, he's newly moved to the northern mass area and Welcome is wondering Maryland. what. Welcome. Uh, yeah, and uh, wondering what game shops we might recommend. Now, I am not the geographical wizard of Massachusetts. Is uh, Danger Planet close enough to him? If Three Trolls is close enough to him, then Danger Planet is definitely close uh, well, enough to Then him. I say yeah. Danger Planet. Yep. I don't know uh, Three Trolls. I'm not Three disparaging Troll, them, but Danger Planet is definitely worth checking stuff, out. Not the stuff I needed, but they had a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of stores in the greater northern mass area. Uh, there's no longer. He asked if there was one in Nashua. There's no longer a gaming store in Nashua, unfortunately, which is where I live. In National New Hampshire, but there is um, Londonderry has the Game Castle, which is where we regularly play. Regularly play. If you're looking for board games, um, Myriad Games is in Salem, is New Hampshire, which is a great store for board games. They also and carry they do carry the War Machine and Hordes. Yep, they stuff, do carry some miniature gaming. They have 1843 War Machine Hordes, and with Fifth Edition, he's going to start carrying 40k. Um, but his board selection is board game selection is second to none. And then, of course, you have Danger Planet Games, which is probably one of the best all-around gaming stores you'll ever walk into, and that's in Waltham, Mass. Also, so uh, I definitely checked that out as well. It's worth the drive. I think yep. it's probably a little farther from you than the Three Trolls, but uh, I check it out. Three Trolls never been there myself, but I'm sure it's, it's I've a heard small good store, about it. but it's it's packed, jam packed full of stuff, and they end up having a lot of events there. All right, uh, Rachel, hey, can I take... take the can I take the next one, yeah, which sure. is uh, David Saunders, and then one of you guys can take the one underneath that. That that's uh, David I'll, from I'll or take, Daniel from London. I'll take the next one. You take the this yeah. one. All right, so we've got David Saunders writes in. I love this one. Starting War Machine because of us. Good on you, Dave. Yeah, it's awesome. I really like he gave us a link, which I'll have to go check out. I have not checked it out. We can check out their uh, painting progress. That's awesome. You won't be disappointed. I like it. Good stuff, David. And I look forward to seeing more of your work. Uh, And also, uh, Daniel from London uh, says he got started in Descent. Thanks to our review, and he loves it, and he's having a great time with it. And we want to bring these kind of emails up because um, we want to let you know that pe- other people besides us yep. enjoy the game, so we're not just uh, making this stuff up. <laughs> we do uh, get lots of these. We get a lot of emails of people saying they bought the game and they love it, uh, and their only frustration is that they got to buy another game because they heard us <laughs> like that too. Um, and we're not saying to buy every game review, uh, no. nor do we, we're going to say you should buy every game review, but of course, if you like it, go ahead and get it. Yeah. Um, so he likes Descent. I do too. I'm going to start a Descent campaign soon. And also, he said rapid fire. It took him a while to get into it. In fact, he turned off our first episode in two minutes, but he stuck with it, and now he likes it. And thank you for your perseverance. Yes. Thank you for your dedication. All right. Um, Craig, you want this yeah, one? Yeah, I'll take this one because I think this one's very interesting. This is oh, from yeah. Paul from England. Did, what, did we already do a Paul from England? Anyway. Well, there can only possibly be one Paul in England, uh, Craig. Clearly only one Paul. 
Yeah, clearly. Uh, okay, he his his email is a long one, but it's interesting, and it first talks about game tribalism. And what he's talking about is, for instance, uh, let's say we have, oh, I don't know, a couple PP fanboys, <laughs> and that everything they talk about is PP or anti, you know, some other company. And uh, there seems to be that kind of rivalry. And, he, and Paul actually says that, or asks, are the corporations responsible for this because of the way they they market their games? And I would I would say that's an odd one. I mean, GW has never really been anti anybody else, mainly because they were so freaking full of themselves through the '80s and the '90s that they never even admitted that there was competition. And by the time there was competition, they were kind of blindsided by it, I think. And Privateer Press started being the small kid in the blo- on the block had to be almost overly aggressive, I think, to establish themselves in the market. And now that they have established themselves, as, as Russ pointed out a couple episodes ago, have pulled back from their anti-other game. For instance, the slam on plastic models that was in the original Prime, page 5, is no longer there. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, at the tournament, there were several people around that were making relatively constant anti-GW comments. So I think if you've established in a corporate way that kind of mindset that it's going to take a while to turn that aircraft carrier around. Well, let me just throw this in here, though. I think I think it has less to do with the companies and more just to do with the nature, human nature. Yeah. Because it's not just... Are you saying we're all tribal? Well, I think so. It's, cause it's not does it just, take a village, Russ? It does, because it's not just <laughs> DW versus privateer. It's um, oh, X- that's that's very true. Xbox versus yeah. 360. Yeah. How many of you driving down the road have seen the sticker on the back of a Ford pickup truck with Calvin urinating on a Chevy symbol, <laughs> right, or vice right. versa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's just it's how we are. Yeah. We get our the thing, Jesus fish and versus we, the Darwin and, fish yeah, with they, legs. That's a little more deep. Well, that's a little more deep. But the but basic yes. premise is we 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 spend a lot of money on this hobby, and by God, we want to be right that it's the best one to play. Yeah. <laughs> so that's we kind of get into it, but. I think to be fair to us here, we as points of fun since, since we're now in the main show now, we're in our little thing. Right. Or the curtains are drawn back. We do poke fun at each other for for these other games, but we do try them. I mean, Craig yep. plays Horror Machine, Horror Machine, and Hordes. I got all excited about Fifth Edition. Um, Rafe's getting back into Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Yeah. We play every board game that lands in front of us. Basically, <laughs> um, I'm excited about the miniature war games that are coming out. Um, you know, I want to try T43. We're going to dabble with yep. Monster Apocalypse. Yep. You know, it's not. Um, I think it's very important for a gamer to keep an open mind and try right. other things because it will reinforce how good your company is. And if it does take people away from your from your tribe, eventually it may make your company wake up and fix things. You're right. And that could be hopefully one of the reasons that GW has taken a lot of you know ideas and, and really rethought their fifth edition and made it what I think is a much superior, far superior game. Yeah. Hopefully, some of that That's a these good other companies point. had to help. So. Damn it. There's a little silver lining. He made another good point. Uh, the con. So what's uh, next on this one? This his, is a good his, email. His email goes on to talk a lot about um, Lord of the Rings from GW, and he he personally loves it, but met with a lot of hostility from 40K and Fantasy fans. So there you go, even in internally in one game company. Well, there's, and there's the rivalry between Fantasy and 40K. Let's and not forget that. Right, that's true, too. Um, but as far as the hostility between uh, the two big game t- uh, fans and and Lord of the Rings, when I worked for Games Workshop, I didn't see that. Um, in fact, they the first thing they had me do when they hired me was make a Lord of the Rings table, uh, and I loved it, and it worked out great. And I was running events on that all the time. And we liked that game. I I really liked we, Lord of the Rings. I game. loved it. I, I think it was a very well done game. Yep. I still have my Lord of the Rings stuff, too. Yeah, I still have. Actually, I have, um, if I could find it, I have the entire front section of Minas Tirith that I built. There you go. Remember that? Yeah, I do. And um, But as far as a non-GW-style game, I think what that actually shows you, because legally they weren't allowed to use any of their original IP. So they, they, they weren't allowed to use any of the rule systems they had. They had to start from scratch. So what to me, what that showed is what GW could do if they started something from the ground up like Russ suggested. Yeah. And uh, to me, I mean, it just it shows that they are a strong and diverse company when they want to be. And again, the artistic and creative elements divorced from the the corporate elements uh, make it a very interesting study in, um, in uh, opposing viewpoints, I think. Right. And that's from Paul Mullis, who goes by Ozbad. By the there way. you go. Yes. 
and All admits right. to being a Russ. I mean, a game whore. Uh, he does admit he plays like everything, including yeah. Can Hauser, AT43, <laughs> yeah. War Machine, Lord there of the Rings. He does it. He plays them all, which is awesome. Good on yes, you, Paul. Indeed. Nick from the D6G email. You know what he's looking forward to? What I'm looking forward to? A Hordes review. Ah, yeah. so uh, yes. And yes. here's what I can promise our fans about the Horde review. Unlike the War Machine review, which we could not help but compare to 40K, we will definitely, the Horde's review will be more... All Hordes. Hordes all animals all the time. And comparing it to War Machine. Not in a Hordes is better than War Machine, but a how is it different from War Machine more thing. Right. So yep. we've already yeah. got the versus 40K thing out of our system, so don't worry about that. But we're definitely going to do a nice Hordes review. Uh, and that's it probably is coming up soon. Not that far away, right? Yeah. Uh, this is an email that's kind of all over. All right, well, we'll skip that then. Let's go mm-hmm. on to another one here. Uh, PP Fluff and disagree with the Blah Dark Heresy review. Yes. Well, the Dark Heresy review was championed by Craig. So, Craig, you're up. Great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, I, I like I said in episode 11, I think um, I agree with you that the fluff is cool and it's all over the place. And you're right, actually. There's lots of diff that you're going to have a lot of trouble finding a lot of the GW fluff as well. So if you're looking for a particular character, it's very difficult. However, I would say that it's much easier to find the overall thread for the 40K fluff. But that's neither here nor there. And as far as the um, the Dark Heresy review, I'm just going to have to assume that we're coming from different points of view because I just found it far too clunky and and sunk into the minutia and th- i could have been spoiled by uh serenity the serenity role the cortex role-playing system is very story-based story driven you have um you know however many um, however much ammo the plot requires however fuel the plot requires so i think it's just a difference in perspective or maybe i was uh, you know maybe it was a bad day um but i i I honor your opinion, and uh, thanks for listening. I'll tell you what, Craig. I'm still interested to take a look at that book and see how it compared to the old yeah, fantasy old, version yeah. to see if it's more. Right now, it's propping up a table in the pub. So, <laughs> all right, sweet. Yeah, I, I, D&D four uh, blows its socks off. I'm sorry, that's my go. opinion. That's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. Okay. All right, and this next one comes from Bill the Bloody. And Bill the Bloody's email was very timely. It was actually a GW po- a DACA post. Yeah. Because he brought up um, that he wanted more details about our relationships and our ongoing adventures with our wives, and how we balance our time between our fantasy or the, between and our games. Oh yeah, there you go. And what you need to do, Bill, is listen to episode eleven. There you go. That's enough said. It's coming out right the same week this is. So uh, take a listen to that and let us know what you think. And remember, women are like cats. <laughs> oh. And Russ think of him, thinks of himself as a caboose. See, and I'm not going to say anything because there's one standing behind me right <laughs> his, now. His wife is standing <laughs> right behind him with an empty glass, which is not right. a good thing. And last but not least, and then we all go to bed. Yeah, we've Hugh, got one from who, Hugh from Australia. The D6 generation email. He says, uh, well, you want to take this one, Craig? Yeah, well, he just wanted to say that he really enjoys the podcast and wanted to give us a, a little um, Australian slang uh, lesson, Uru. Uru is you Aussie gotta, for see you later, and it will get you a lot of Aussie cred if you... Uh, well, you got to say with an Australian accent. Uru. Uru, Uru. Uru. You. Uru. They, that, is that right? And I think it's pretty funny that his name is Hugh, because it's Uru, you. Uru, you. Yeah. yeah. How's that, Hugh? <laughs> Thank Good. you, Hugh. We'll, we'll work, keep working on that, yeah. and if we sound and awful with American Australian yeah, accents... That's your fault. Uh, yeah. yeah. You okay. Can. So thank you all. So Uru, everybody. Uru. And that's the mailbag this time around. Uh, thanks again for all your letters and look for voicemail coming soon. Coming soon. Achievement unlocked. You've made it to the end of another D6 Generation episode, the podcast whose humor has universally been acclaimed as not too horrible. Please let us know what you thought of the show by either emailing us at info at the d6 generation.com or by posting in our official d6g episode thread at the top of the daca discussions forum on dacadaca.com if for some inexplicable reason you actually enjoyed this show you can help others find out about it by leaving positive reviews on itunes see you in two weeks thanks for listening and happy gaming <laughs>